A. A. Ant. Antelope. A. Ant. The letter A. A. Right. Is that no, it's <laughs> a, it's a letter A. Alright, 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 alright. Is that what you were I spying? The letter A. Yeah. It's a bit tricky, that. Why have I ended up with A again? Ape. Hold on, I'll sort ape. Nobody said ape. Ooh, ooh, ape. Fly up and down. That's the wish washers. We can do it better than that. Wipers on the bus go swish, 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 sw
pulse and a heartbeat. And he said, can I wear your boobs, please? And she said, of course you can. And um, he w so I went, way. <laughs> Lay. <laughs> Pulling up to traffic lights, they're actually looking up at you. They're smaller than you and they want to beat you in, in another way. They want to show you that they're faster because you're bigger. You're higher than them. If you're higher up in the ranks, then you're better. That's the way I think. After we got the Vitara, the next move then was to join the Rhino Club, which is a, a club specially for Suzuki four-wheel drive car owners. And I was reading through the magazine and in it there was a, a TV presenter who had bought a Vitara. And there was one bit that I read that he'd said, I've always fancied a Jeep type vehicle and a lot of my friends have Range Rovers, but they're a bit straight. With the extras you can have, the Vitaras have a lot more individuality. And that was exactly how I felt when I bought mine. I think there's an expectation where we live, um, in, in a sort of very deep rural community where people live there all their lives. The incomers like us will have espaces, will have sort of very shiny cars that um, that maybe aren't very good workhorses. But um, I think at least the Land Rover doesn't doesn't really rub people up the wrong way. It's a bit like going for a walk across the fields wearing a day glow shell suit. You know, it's just not done. Um, it's almost disrespectful to the environment if that's how you do it. Um, in the same way, having green wellies and a barber jacket can be seen to be a bit, a bit off as well if they're not really battered. And the Land Rover has the same sort of feeling. The Land Rover feels like it belongs in the countryside and it's accepted for being there. The area we lived in before was a, a large modern housing estate. And somehow parking this on our drive would have almost been ramming it down people's throats. Whereas where we live now, um, it's, it's not unusual to see Land Rovers driving around in the country. It's used by everybody. I mean, there, there are, the farmers use it as a, as a workhorse. There are people like us who use it as a family car. You know, the Queen's got one that she uses on, on Balmoral. Um, so it seems to be, every, it crosses all boundaries, crosses um, all types of people, um, all types of nationalities, they're used all over the world. Um, it just seems universal. Being, being as high up as this in a Land Rover, for me, feels like wearing high-heeled shoes. It has the same same sort of feeling. It's also like a statement in, in, in as much as we've you know, raised our horizon. Whereas before we had a, a heap of a car which was full of rust and was falling apart and would backfire everywhere we went. Um, it kind of lowered us socially if you like and now the Land Rover has kind of lifted us um, above all that. That's right, you get into it and you don't instantly feel like the family grot on an outing. You know, you actually feel really good. Polo. Have you got your polo? Right, yellow. Yeah, 
two. Ready, one, one. Ready? Right. Ready, steady, go. But well, you got to have them in there the longest, and it must yeah. have break. No, and no pushing them up your nose. When I was younger, there was a poster and it said someday you'll own a big family car. Basically, you'll be a responsible, boring person. And until that day comes, drive an MG Midget. And then I became a mother and I sort of drove a lot of I'm going to Sainsbury's cars and wore sensible shoes and, and sort of became invisible. And the children took over everything. They took over the car, they took over me, they took over my personality. And when it, the Peugeot was on its last legs, the feeling was, I don't, I don't want this anymore. I, I want to be an independent person. I want to enjoy the driving that I do. I want to in, enjoy myself. And, and that was very much part of my motivation for hassling Jerry into getting me a decent car. I suppose we've always got this dream about selling the house, lock, stock and barrel, uh, and just taking off, taking the kids out of school, packing them in. With a with an Espace or with a Volvo, you know, we'd probably get as far as a ferry and turn around and come back. With, with a Land Rover, we could actually pack everybody in it and just go. There's a, a part of the Land Rover that although we remortgaged the house to buy it, we feel that it's part of our future. If things go terribly wrong, the house could go, everything in the house could go, we'd keep the car and we could just take off and the car could become our life. Whereas I can't see us doing that in a, in a Volkswagen Polo. You know, I can't see us taking that across Africa. The Range Rover's a vehicle that's quite happy in any company, really. You can turn up at the car park at Twickenham in one, you can turn up at the Opera in one, you can go to Glyndebourne in it and feel perfectly at home anywhere. The nice thing about the Prevu is it's not actually a car that, that really makes a very strong statement. It's sort of anonymous, which I think we quite enjoy. I suppose at the end of the day, I, I have a job and a lifestyle that just doesn't say Ford or Vauxhall. I mean, that's what it comes down to. When I first started driving the Volvo, I realised I actually enjoyed it. And I thought to myself, oh gosh, maybe all my life I've been a closet Volvo driver. And I suddenly come out of the closet.
any game boy down. Jim. Turn the sound up. The first house as you come into the close has an order. Next to them they have an Orion and next to those they have a Cavalier. After that comes my friend Brian with his Peugeot. Next to Brian is a Metro and the last one is a Ford Orion. I'd compare it to others on the street, obviously. I'm the only one that's got a Volvo. Only one with any sense, I think, you know, to drive one. And as far as I'm concerned, it is the best on this street. Well, there's a two series Volvo coming up now, look. <laughs> and our old, one of our old cars, look at There it goes, look. Same colour as what your granddad was. From when I was a little baby, all I can remember is having a Volvo, so I'd like him to have a change. It's this one passing us, same colour but 9 series. That's an, oh, that's an SE, 940 SE. Good. He's always had Volvos and my uncle's got a Volvo. My other uncle had a Volvo. My granddad's got a Volvo. I can't think of anyone else, but I'm sure if my nan and could drive, she'd probably have a Volvo. The image it seems to give to other people is one that they think you've got, you know, quite a bit of money. I'll put them in a similar bracket to probably the lower range BMWs. I'd certainly put them in a higher class than any Ford. It was quite funny recently. I went to the hairdressers and the chap who owns the salon, he'd got some relative in who'd hired a Volvo. And I happened to say that we'd got a Volvo and he said, he said, if I'd have known that, I'd have charged you extra. So, you know, it just sort of proves it's a bit of a status symbol. Sometimes when we're travelling it can get quite hectic. Sometimes the kids can be squabbling and then you get me and Vaughan in the front. Shouting at the kids. Shouting at the kids in the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it really can uh, be, uh, get quite over the it top. It gets annoying sometimes. if Carl's got his personal stereo on full blast because it's not just him can hear it, everybody can hear it and the type of music that he listens to <laughs> just in my cup of tea. One of the journeys that we make every year uh, would be down south to the New Forest. We love it down there. Plenty of space between all the caravans. When we're coming up home again, it looks grey and cloudy and the roads look dirty and we get this feeling of depression because we're coming back up north again. If money was no object, I'd move down south like a shot. We love it down there. All right, 
right, first one to spot a dinosaur cloud. Oh, this is not far one up there, is it? it? Nothing looks like anything today. That uh, looks... Oh, super super out. That looks like a dragon a bit, and its mouth's open, and it's just about going to sp- um, get that Spit kind of... fire. Yeah. Can you see it looks like a bit? No. The Mercedes isn't us at all. We are more of a get up and go anywhere type family. It's just too sophisticated and I believe actually gives people the the wrong image of the type of family that we are. I think the Mercedes probably would suit an older couple. We're much more of a gung-ho Wellington boots, throw the dogs, the cats, the dog I, food. I, I think the if we were lined feeding. up as a family and you had to pick choose which car went with which family, I don't think for a minute the average person would say, Oh yes, that, that row family, they go with the Mercedes estate. I don't know what they might choose for us, but I don't really think they'd put us with the Mercedes. The Shogun we had before this car suited us as a family, but purely because of financial reasons, we couldn't afford to keep it, and I purchased the Mercedes-Benz second-hand. And when my work load improves, we will acquire another 4x4 vehicle. I don't think my mother was particularly enamoured when we got the Shogun. I thought it was great, and she seemed a little bit quiet about it and mumbled something about it being a bit Japanesey. And my father, who incidentally never really bore a grudge against anyone or anything, but he had been a prisoner of war in Japan for four years. And I think Mum thought, oh, why didn't they get a, a nice British Range Rover? Pested left, right, and centre all the time, all the time, about getting another high up four wheel drive vehicle. You know, so can we have something a little bit different, Dad? Can we go back to having a four wheel drive, Dad? So you get that all the time, wherever you go. I spy? No. Word game? No. I don't want to do that. You want to do anything? Later. I don't really want to have Go a on, give on with you lot. You I think I've got long. three dwarves in the back called Grumpy, Grumpy and Bloody Grumpy. Come on, let's put some music on. This is boring otherwise. Go we've on, got to man. drive all the way. Yeah, go on. Ding, 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 
of other people that I see with the Mercedes-Benz estates, they get out the picnic tables, they get out the, the actual picnic hamper, which has probably arrived from Harrods, and we're sat down uh, having egg and cress and a couple of cans of beer, and I think that really is the major difference between us as a family and the majority of other people that I see actually drive Mercedes. An estate car does say I'm a grown-up. An estate car says, I have responsibilities. But I think the Audi is the sexiest of them. And, yeah, I think it's great fun. The Preview, I think, is a great car for the kids because they can just walk around inside. It's more like a room for them. Joe can get over the back seat. He can play football and it's raining in the back. It's a sort of car that's more like a playground for the children than anything else. Before I had the baby, my friend said to me, oh, you'll be going to coffee mornings and you'll be driving a Volvo. And I said, never in a month of Sundays. And what is it? I'm going to coffee mornings and I'm driving a Volvo. The family are nipping over to France for a weekend. We're going to visit somewhere that we want to buy some wine. The Range Rover is perfect because there's room for a few cases in the back. One currant bun in a baker's shop, a round and fat with sugar on the top. Along came a Stanley with a belly white bay, put a currant bun and took it away. We first started noticing as spasses, I think, was um, the uh, twins at the bottom of our street. No, that's not right. Is that not no. right? Because you have always looked Well, yeah, but I'm just saying I we never started noticing, no but you really wanted yeah. one for ages and ages. But you, you, I mean, combined was when you saw the twins, because the twins have got one and they've got yeah. anything like that. Of course, it's an older one, it's an older style, so it's a different shape to ours. But that's, what, that's when we first started seeing them. And it just grew, didn't it? Yeah. We used like to... true love does. It started with just <laughs> snatches. And then it grew where just we were like following them around, like, yeah. didn't it? And you know we used to follow it because Stanley says, even before we had an espace, Stanley used to say, I mean, his first words virtually, even before, there's a spas, there's a spas. Before he could hardly speak, he used to say it. <laughs> did. That's not true. Did. He's embarrassed, but you did, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> the main thing for me for the Espas was swiveling the seats around and the picnic facilities, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Because we went to look at one and it didn't have all the picnic facilities, did it? It didn't have the picnic no. tables on the back, and I just said, well, I don't want it. And of course, and the other thing, the other thing. And the man said, "Well, you're going to make a decision like that over a plastic picnic table." But you see, I was, wasn't it? We were. We didn't buy his car, did we? No, we didn't, because it didn't have a plastic. Picnic didn't have a plastic table. picnic table. I think one of the other things is that uh, the other thing is just like it's it's a really good car because like when we had Betty, well, Betty was you were breastfeeding a lot, and it's like the ultimate breastfeeding car, isn't it? 
Yeah. We paid lip service to the yeah. state cards. We went and looked at them, didn't we? We did. But all, all the time at the back of the mind is going, but it's not in a spam. It's not in a spam. But it, it, didn't, it represented the, uh, the dangerous choice, as it were, because basically the most sensible choice could be like a Sierra State or something like that. Or, and, uh, and so basically when, when we actually decided to buy it, it was like kind of a daring thing to do. And it probably, probably represents the most daring thing we've ever done in our lives. Cause of, Although we actually like to think that we like just get up and go, we're just like those kind of get up and go people that go everywhere. Think like we're just a minute's notice. We just do it like just takes us ages, and we really plan it, and we never really do anything like that that's really adventurous. And we're really, basically, we've always taken the safe, mature options, and, and this represents our, our most frivolous purchase, which I think, in, in one sense, is quite sad. Really, <laughs> it's very sad <laughs> that you know, like a car, <laughs> represents our most dangerous manoeuvre. <laughs> European feel to it, probably more than most cars have. It's like actually feels a bit continental, I suppose. We like European things. I mean, the week before we got the car, I tried to get a flag, European flag for it because I'd, see, I'd seen them, you know, you see them all driving around, you get the European flags and stuff like that. And eventually, in actual fact, this last holiday, I actually found the actual flag that I wanted, but up until this point, we've had to make do with a GB sticker with European stars on it. It's good if they fall asleep. That's the best yeah. bit of the car. But, but if uh, I mean if they're awake, then we can. You, you'll, get the ba- you'll get in the yeah, back. You'll get in the back with them. We've got a new game with Stan, haven't we? We've not yeah, really been able. See, where we usually play games, we're not. He's not always been able to play because like we don't. Really, well, he's they're too super young. complex. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to be really, really clever. And you don't want to be beaten by a three-year-old. That's right. <laughs> but we've got this new one, and it's like, how do you make? It's called. You see, and what you do is stand there, You go around asking questions, like, um, example, how do you make? Um, look, my mind's gone blank. I'm not very good. How do you make a video recording? Yeah, how do you make yourself? Then I'll go. First, you get plastic and metal, and, you go, and then you mix it all together. And that's, and it. that's it. Right. And then you'll Dad, go. Dad, how do you make a mountain? <laughs> We sing so I mean we try and sing songs but he usually gives it he either does that if he's not in it he then just goes like this and slams onto his stop ears stop playing and, stop, stop singing stop, stop singing. singing so uh, we carry on even louder <laughs> just to really irritate him that's the other game yeah but that's the other thing is irritating singing. the kids <laughs> singing Stanley is a bogey yeah that's what we do <laughs> Stanley is a bogey face a doodah a doodah Stanley is a bogey face doody doodah day which it really irritates him. Yeah, and then he'll be going like this. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. So what you have to do is to get him in a good mood. Stanley is a lovely do-da, do-da. Stanley is a lovely do-da-do-da-day. What do you want? Um, a happy meal, please. happy meal. Um, chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. What, what? would you like with it? A toy and a coat. Coat for Carola. And would you like tomato ketchup? Yeah. Okay. Anything else in your dessert? Yeah. Um, a fish for Betty and two coat and two coffees, please. Fillet of fish and two coffees. Yes, please. Would you like any pies or donuts? No, thank you. Okay. Now I'll get the first one because it's drinks. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's pop that there. Can we grab that one? Alright, thank you. you. Can I grab that one? Do you want some balloons? Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, look at them. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Look at them balloons. Got balloons back. Yeah. Thank you. I've got mine. Have you got yours? Well, what we're just going to wait till we get into the car park. Oh, no. I got. We'll turn the seats around. Alright, can you jump? Can you jump over there? Right, are you over? Set. Right, one sec. Me back. How are we doing? Set. Well, you're not going to. You can have a table. 
In your imagination, if you see a car park, you'd see estate cars and you'd see saloon cars and it would just be like grey sky, you know, and the people would just be sitting there. And if you had an espace in this car park, the sun would be shining and there would be like a rainbow and birds twittering all around it. And all the people would be really happy and smiling because it's just such a fun car to us. Maybe my hearing must be going. I can't even hear a thank you. People who've never seen a family driving a rent wreck before, obviously they just don't know how to interpret it. I mean, are they poor people who can't afford anything better? Are they people who don't care what they drive? Are they rich people who just don't give a sod? A couple of years ago, we had a Montego estate, good lifestyle, and then the recession hit us very badly, and we lost that all. And we hired rent a -rec because they were a cheap option, and they were the only option at the time. The area that we live in is mainly retired people and people who are sort of comfortable. The main cars they drive are Peugeots, Volvos. And of course, when we brought the first yellow car home, I mean, there was horrified looking faces from behind curtains as we pulled the car into the driveway. I found when I used to take the children to school in the Renteret, I used to deliberately be late, so no one saw me because it was an embarrassment. It, it, um, it advertised the fact that um, you'd probably lost your money, <laughs> you lost your car. Like wearing a placard <laughs> around your neck so I'm poor. Yeah. When the first one caught fire, the wipers fly off when it's pouring down with rain, the windows often drop into the doors, and quite often the petrol gauges didn't work. So you always had to be prepared, you always had to carry a gallon of petrol with you, just in case. Played um, what's it called? Kiss Jacks. That was it. Dazzy Duck. You thought you babysitting? <laughs> no, you babysit. You went to their um, like they had like a little party thing on. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's this party then? All cold rose chaps. Oh, <laughs> all the navy guys. <laughs> no, I think they're all like married and stuff. Oh. Make no difference. <laughs> Mum. <laughs> I thought I thought you were going to babysit. Come and bowl at twelve o'clock. I did not bowl in at 12 o'clock. You did bowl in at 12 o'clock. I did. She did. I came in at 11. She did. She did. She did. We're driving along and I look in my rear view mirror, as I normally do, and there's three children sitting there, Sonia in the middle. We go past some of her friends, I look in the rear view mirror, and Sonia's slipped down onto the floor, and she's begging me, not to let her friends know that she's actually in the car. So what I normally do is just stop and shout to her friends. And of course this gets Sonia into a panic. She's totally embarrassed by the car.
When we're driving around in our rickety rentals, we feel as if we're living within our means. There's no pretense about us, and that's it. I mean, we're not investing lots of money to maintain an image which we can't afford. And that's why I would rather drive around in a yellow wreck than have a car on HP that I couldn't afford to pay for. I don't expect a really flashy car. If they had the money, it'd be nice, but um, just something normal, like a Fiesta or something, like all your friends' parents have. Every car on the road has an image for the people that drive it. And one of the things that really appeals to me about the Land Rover is the fact that it doesn't have an image. It doesn't say anything about it at all. The retailer it suits us because we're very outgoing. We like to go to different places. And I feel that this car can get us anywhere. I suppose I just feel that the Mercedes is rather a smoothie type of car and I don't think we're a smoothie type of family. A lot of people don't like Volvos. A lot of people wouldn't dream of going out and buying one, but it suits us as a family and as far as I'm concerned we're sticking with Volvo. It adds to our family. It's like our hobby. You know, we don't go windsurfing. <laughs> we go a spassing. B. B. Yeah. Broom. Nope. Bricks. Nope. Bodies. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> they can't oh. they make any more bed. Oh, I'll tell you anyway. B. Buildings. Oh, very good. Dad, can we just go outside so I can go to the toilet? Home. I can't stand five minutes. I'll be I'll back. To I'm probably pissed myself by that. Oh, funny. Believe you me, you do that, you'll you'll end up walking home. I can remember when I pissed myself in assembly. Yeah, so can I. Oh yeah, and they said. I think the whole village heard about in that. A pair of crumpling flare yeah. trousers <laughs> were about a foot too short. <laughs> you mean so send them home in the car? Having a wee in the bloody car. We'll be home in five minutes and that's it, okay? <laughs>